Hi guys, it's Lynn here. I hope everyone is having an amazing day. Now, welcome to my January Cacti and Succulent Polytunnel Collection, part one. I'm going to be doing this video in two parts. And the reason for that is because it you usually ends up a very long video when I do it as one long video. So this is going to be part one and part two I'm going to put on after this uh, tomorrow. And if you're watching this video in the future, part two will already be on. <laughs> and stay tuned for my indoor uh, cacti and succulents and houseplants update as well coming up in a few days time after the polytunnel video. So here we go. I'm going to start off part one is going to be all of this side here and then part two is going to be this side. So here I am and uh, starting off here with my Trichoceria scopolicolas. I have three very large ones in this big bowl here and I'm happy to say that this one is in flower bud in January and it actually started to come into flower bud I think it's in the November time and I was amazed the flower bud is still on it is actually getting bigger and bigger as you can see it's very very slow progressing but it's still on it may stay there now and then decide to open in the spring or it may just fall off I'm not sure but it is in flower bud wrong time of year but I seem to have plants that have a mind of their own <laughs> and then here I have my big uh, Trachocerus grandiflorus red star that's sort of overwintering now and as I say because it is the winter time January the majority if not pretty much all of the cacti succulents are all pretty much dormant but I've got some succulents into flower and there is some uh, cacti as well in bud which I'm going to show you in this video now these are my Cal and Coe, uh, mother of thousands plants. I have three different types in the polytunnel. This one is the um, Cal and Coe, um Degre Montiana times tubifloura, which has the sort of narrow, narrow leaves there with the little baby plantlets all on the edges. And then I have my Cal and Coe tubifloura, which has the little babies all of the very, very tips there, as you can see, with the more uh, slender little leaves, leaf segments, as, you, as if you can call them modified leaves. And then I have my more commonly seen uh, Calanco de Gromontianas at the bottom there that has the wider leaves, more nicknamed the alligator mother of thousands plant there. So quite a few different types. Then I have my big one, my big um, Echinopsis oxygona there, happily overwintering in the corner. And then um, Trachocerius, um, Trachocerius pacanoi, commonly known as one of the San Pedro type of cacti there. Have a few of my serious cacti, me and Hans's serious cacti there, mostly all Trichocerius varieties, all over winter in there, again pretty much dormant. And this is a big cloister cactus there, um, cloister cactus bormanii, also pretty much over wintering. And uh, I'm going to show you the epiphytic cacti afterwards. And here's a mixture, as I say, of Trichocerius different varieties. Just give you a bit of a scan around and so say there's nothing really happening here. They're all pretty much overwintering as they do at this time of year. All being kept, don't water any of these at all now um, until probably be even April before I give these any water. So they're all pretty much, if not practically all bone dry in their pots, which is really important for overwintering cacti because especially here in our damp climate in Highland, um, damp uh, soil would uh, make them rot when they're dormant in cool and um, damp environments especially. And I have my ma two matacanas here, me and Hansi's next to each other. Now, believe it or not, they're actually coming into bud, which is absolutely crazy at this time of year but sometimes you get to the middle of January and because the, the days are starting to get a little bit longer now um, they sort of come into a bit of they can't wait till spring I'm not sure if the, if the flower buds are going to stay on or not but it's going to be interesting to see but as I say even though they're coming into bud I'm still not watering anything in here because it would just the dampness would just encourage rot at this time of year. All of my um, Lophophores, me and Hans's Lophophores, have lots of different varieties, lots of different types there. Some we've grown ourselves from seed, as you can see. A mixture here of cloister cacti here, a few different varieties. This actual amazing Trachocerius here, this big group um, in here. Not quite sure the exact variety. It's one that Hans grew himself from seed quite a few years ago, so it's doing very well. Some more Matucanas at the back there, and um, a Serious also. And now and this one here is our lovely big Luxemburger Principis that we got from our very wonderful late friend Bill. It was from his from his collection. Very very beautiful old old plant there, and that's over wintering well selection of different types of all different cacti that's our own little my own little Luxembourg principis that I've had for absolutely years very small in comparison to the lovely big one over there 
And here's another Mammillaria, commonly called the snow cap. That's actually been flowering. This was flowering. Um, every time I tried to make a video a few times, but it just didn't come out because the flowers are so tiny and the macro is not brilliant. Um, but it's just sort of stopped flowering now. Again, one of the, the winter flowering Mammillarias, as they, they often are. But again, even though it's winter flowering, I still kept this totally dry over the winter because of the, the time of year. And this is my Robutia albipilosa, looking very happy there. Nice and... Uh, Lots of beautiful new little pups all around it on there. Again, it's dormant at the moment and hopefully this will flower for me in the spring. One of a, another Thello cactus there from the, the late Bill's collection. Another one over there as well. All pretty much dormant, but hopefully it'll give you an idea of the bit of a collection update here. This one is absolutely gorgeous as well. Another another Thello cactus here. Absolutely gorgeous spines on it, and this one is my Mammillaria carmenera, absolutely beautiful. And this one usually comes into sort of bud in the sort of mid March to early April time, so um, they're just beautiful even when they're, they're dormant, they're just so gorgeous. A mixture of many different types here, and a Neoporteria also here, absolutely gorgeous. Another little Mammillaria fragilis, and uh, mixture here, another Mammillaria there, absolutely wonderful. Mammillaria plumosa, absolutely gorgeous. Now, I find that this sometimes does flower in the winter and sometimes it doesn't. Uh, again, when I had this indoors a few years ago, I used to give it a tiny bit of water in the winter and it always used to flower. But because it is in the polyton, I don't water it um, because it's just better to be, I'd rather forgo flowers than I would have rot. And I say the reason why I keep them so dry is because it's a damp environment here, here in Northern Ireland. And then a lovely ferro cactus there. And this is my very old, my very old ferro, sorry, my very, very old gymno, gym, sorry, my very, very old ferro cactus, I should say. It's the wrong label on there. The labels come off on the other ones, so I put the, the wrong label on. This is my very old ferro cactus, one, my red spined one. Absolutely beautiful. Multi headed. And I've had this for, I think, 25 26 years. And years ago now, I had to cut the top of it when it had rot at the top and uh, it formed multi heads over over the years absolutely gorgeous specimen here we have a mixture of some epiphyllums as well there some succulents at the back and here more succulents here some sedums this is a lovely crassula this is absolutely gorgeous here this is crassula um ma ma margi marginalis i think fairy garter and it always goes a lovely red color in full sunshine when i used to have this indoors it went green sometimes it goes green this time of year but we've had quite a lot of bit of bit of sunny weather even though it's been a sort of damp in between everything and it brings the color out a lot more another lovely crassulas there and this is mostly all the crassula collection i have all the succulents pretty much um some some crassulas are winter grows and some are winter flowering and um, the majority of these over here now are pretty much dormant at this time of year and uh, just keep them all dry as well. I'll only really water the succulents if they show signs of, of shriveling and then I will give them a tiny bit of water but I do prefer to keep everything practically dry because um, obviously it is the dampness that affects plants, a cacti and succulents more at this time of year than it is the temperatures. Because here in, in Northern Ireland especially, and in the UK in general, it's not particularly cold climate in winter compared to some countries, but it's the damp humidity that's always the, the biggest problem. This, this little succulent, not quite sure what it is, is actually coming into flower, which is lovely to see. This one here is absolutely, this is the um, cremocedum. And this was given to me as a cutting from my um, very wonderful friend Karina in Canada. Um, Fifi has a lovely channel that the Karina has. And uh, look at this, it's absolutely beautiful. It's doing so well. Again, not a drop of water is going to be given to any, any of these now. I did water this one the other day because it needed a tiny bit of water and it's already plumped up already. Here again, now this is my... Um, uh, elephant type is tested in area that's act actively growing this seems to grow in the winter time as well loads of little vine there and here's some aeniums some variegated and some of the um, the squats cup purple one and here i have my um, string of pearls and my string of tears all sort of overwintering pretty well here. I gave the string of tears a little bit of water because that needed, the, the, the little tears were starting to shrivel a little bit. So in that case, I gave it a bit of water, but I don't only really water any of the succulents in the polyton when they actually do show signs of shriveling. Um, more calanchoes at the back there, Sonicio. 
and some um, Echeverias, Echograpta vitalums, all at the back and um, another Echeveria there. And, uh, another little Crassula also, commonly known as the baby's necklace. Do you show that's my other one here in absolutely beautiful winter flower, absolutely gorgeous guys. And here I have some um, little mixtures of also Grapta, Grapta varias, Echeverias, a few different types all going on here. Another Echeveria there, another little Crassula. Here some sedums and some little Calanchoes there also, Crassulas. Bit of a mixture of everything all in a pretty much dormant at the moment. I've got my um, Gasteria, variegated Gasterias and my, um, my sedum here. And this one is the, the nickname the jelly bean plant because of its likeness to little jelly beans. It's lovely pink, pink uh, colour to it. And this one is my um, sedum burrito's tail. And here more gasterias, aloes I've grown myself from seed, all pretty much dormant at the moment. One of my um, hawarthias there as well. Doing absolutely wonderful. And here's some more aloes on the floor. Now underneath here we've got a mixture of aloes, gasterias, hawarthias, all pretty much dormant at the moment. Some of the aloes will, will still flower in the winter time. Again, I keep them dry um, because of the, the high humidity levels here. And uh, as I say, succulents and cacti do store a lot of water so they can go a long time without any watering. And uh, this one has been flowering. I'll have to prune that back. There, one of my Hawarthias. Hope you can see it under there. And here, little agaves. And this one, I love this. This aloe there, absolutely lovely. And uh, more aloes all at the top. This one, here's my um, aloe arborescence that I've grown from seed. Growing pretty big now. And there, some more Hawarthias and Gasteras, everything under there. And then I'm going to finish this video now before I go on to the next side. I'm just going to quickly show this side with the epiphytes. And uh, this one is my old Slumbergera truncata, commonly known as a Thanksgiving cactus, which is in lovely, lovely bird. And I did an update on my Slumbergeras the other day. So do check that video if you haven't seen that one. Um, this is going to be blooming beautiful very soon. And then I'm just going to show you this other side now. I've got epiphyllums, which are pretty much um, dormant, as you know, this time of year. Again, all being kept dry because of the cold temperatures. This is my Cleistocactus collidimonasis. Again, being kept dry. And there's a little succulent. I don't know what this is that's sort of growing out of this. And that's also coming into flower as well, even though the soil is dry. My um, Cleistocactus, um, also winterii, all dormant. And some Aporophyllum, cacti as well. Three different varieties in here. And uh, this one here, the Flagliformis Sapporo cactus, commonly known as the, um, the rat's tail. Here my zigzag epiphyllum here, overwintering pretty much okay. And um, this one here. And then this is another epiphyllum. Funny enough, it's actually in, in birds, which I'm happy to see. Buds on this. Look at that guy. So that's hopefully going to be blooming beautiful as well. It can't wait till spring. And that's all of this side. I've got the... Big aloes, I just don't want to forget these, these two big aloes here. These were Honsies that he brought over from Sweden, absolutely incredible. His big aloe vera there, an absolute beauty. And also his aloe arborescens there, you see the size of them, they're huge. And that's pretty much it for this side of the, um, the polytunnel guys. So stay tuned for part two, which I'll put up tomorrow. And if you're watching this in the future, the video will already be on directly after this one. And I'll remember to link it up above and the end of this video too. And then um, stay tuned for part two. So guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you haven't done already, please do subscribe. And don't forget to click that notification bell. And if you want to know a little bit more about how to grow cacti and succulents, do check out my website, desertplantsofavalon.com. And as I say, this is part one, and stay tuned now to watch part two.